So here we have Jack, who has called his internet provider. Six occasions he's done that, and these are the wait times that he's had on each call. He waited 13 minutes, 16 minutes, 10 minutes, and so on. And we were asked to calculate the mean and the standard deviation of these times. Now, standard deviation, if we have a look at that, there is given on your formula sheet in the exam two possible forms of this standard deviation or ways of calculating the standard deviation and in there you'll find well let, let's put down x uh, are the data values uh, so when x appears in these formulas that means the 13 the 16 the 10 etc that's the data values uh, x bar is the mean of the data's values. You add them all up. That's the sum of all these x's and divide by the number of data values there are. In this case, there's six. So that's what n stands for, number of data values. In this case, there's six. So that's what all these little um, letters stand for. So let's start out working out the standard deviation because in the process of that we'll be able to work out what the mean is. So first of all we're going to write down the six values of x, the data values. That's 13, 16, 10, 22, 5 and 12. And let's go up to this first formula. x minus x bar appears here. So we do have to work out x bar. So we do need the total of all these. That's the sum of all these data values. And you can use or you should be using a calculator just to double check that. I'll do this in my head. There's 13, 29, 39, 50, 61, 66, 78 for the total. So the x bar, the mean, is that sum that I've just worked out divided by the number of data values that there are. So it's a 78 divided by 6. And that gives us 13. So the mean is 13. So the, the next thing we'll need to work out is this x minus x bar. How far do these data values differ from the mean value? That's the deviations from the mean. So we're taking 13 minus 13 is 0. 16 minus 13 is 3. 10 minus 13 is negative 3. 22 minus 13 is 9. 5 minus 13 is negative 8 and 12 minus 13 is negative 1. And it says we need to add the squares of these deviations. So the next column will be these deviations that we've calculated squared. So 0 squared is 0. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 nines are 81, eight, negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64, and negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. So we need to find the sum of the squares of these deviations. So down here we have the sum of the numbers in this column. So again, calculator should be used for this, but I'm good, going to do this in my head. Uh, 9 and 9 is 18, 19, 23, 24, and 8 and 8 is 16. So it's 164 for the sum of these deviations. So therefore I can now apply this formula because I do have all the bits and pieces. The top line of this fraction, the sum of the squared deviations is 164 divided by one less than the number of data values, 
which is 6 minus 1, that's 5. So I've got the square root of 164 over 5. So calculator 164 divided by 5 that's 32.8 square root of that answer and there it is so it equals 5.727 and so on now it doesn't tell you how accurate this standard deviation has to be so we'll do it to three figures 5 point seven three and that's the three sig figs three significant figures so standard deviation we'd better just be clear that the examiner knows which values are which standard deviation of that and the mean is equal to let's get rid of this so we can see what we've done there the mean x bar is equal to 13. So there's our two answers, 13 and 5.73. So let's now use the second uh, formula, alternative method of finding the standard deviation. So as before, we'll need to look at the data points. Let's write them down again, 13, 16, 10, 22, 5 and 12. This time, however, the formula says x squared, sigma of x squared, the sum of all the x values squared. So data points need squared. A kind of calculator you'd use for that. There's 169 for that, 256 when you square that, 100 for that, uh, 424 or 484 when you square that, 25 and 144. Uh, and so the total of these values, let's do that in the calculator, 169 plus 256 plus 100 plus 484 plus 25 plus 144 comes to 1178. So that's the sum of the squares of these data values. We've also got here the sum of the data values. Can't quite remember what that was. That's 29, 39, 61, 66, 78. So that takes care of that divided by n. So we have everything calculated. So standard deviation is the square root of sigma x squared, which is 1, 1, 7, 8 minus the sum of the data values squared, that's 78 squared, we'll need to work that out in a minute, divided by n, that's the number of data values, which is 6, over 1 less than the number of data values, which would be 5. So there's some uh, calculations that we need to do. So it's 1178 minus 78 squared over 6, 78 squared divided by 6. That's 1014. And we have to divide that by 5. So 1014 from 1178 uh, would be 164 over 5 square rooted. So 164 over 5, 164 divided by 5, that's 32.8 square rooted. Square root of that answer. So there we go, 5.7 Two, seven, and so on. So as we got before, that's approximately five point 
7.3 and again that's to three significant figures so that's in agreement as it should be with the previous uh, result so just make sure that the examiner knows that the mean as we said before is equal to well in this case we hadn't worked it out but uh, whatever we got with the mean before which is the 78 over 6 which was 13 so that needs to be put in and the standard deviation is 5.73 to 3 significant figures ok so let's now look at the second part of the question and that says Sophie also called the same inter internet provider on several occasions and her mean waiting time is uh, different was 15 and standard deviation was 4.3 so we've got to make a valid statement about her experiences and Jack's experiences so for Sophie mean that's x bar was 15 and the standard deviation s in her case was 4.3 now recall that what we calculated in Jack's case was that the mean was 13 and the standard deviation was 5.73 so we're asked to make two valid comments comparing Sophie's waiting times with Jack's waiting times now the main idea here is that the standard deviation if it's smaller then it means the waiting times are clustered very close to the mean they don't deviate too much from that mean if the deviation is larger as in Jack's case then the waiting times are slightly more spread out from around the mean so we would say two things first of all Sophie's average waiting time was greater than Jack's waiting time so on average Sophie waited longer than Jack now that is 15 minutes uh, compared to 13 minutes so there's the first thing the second thing is that around about that average the waiting times that Sophie was subject to were less spread out they were clustered around that 15 more so than Jack's waiting time his were spread out more uh, so we'll say that um, Jack's waiting time Jack's waiting times were more spread out around the mean than were Sophie's waiting times so we're talking about uh, 5.73 for Jack greater than 4.3 for Sophie so that's the way you would read a larger standard deviation that his waiting times were spread out uh, more around the mean time that he had to wait compared to Sophie's which were more clustered they were closer to her mean than Jack's waiting time were to his mean 